So hi guys, welcome to RBI 247. I am Mansi Anand, your mentor for the series. So guys, as you all must be knowing that in this series, we discuss a set of five questions which are related to finance and economics current affairs, which can be of use to you if you are preparing for competitive exams, right? So before moving to question number one today, I would like to ask you guys to subscribe to our channel. So if you are a new entrant and you are watching our video for the very first time, then do not forget to hit the subscribe button. It can help you to stay in touch with us. After that, pressing this bell icon can help you to get notified whenever a new video comes up. And you can also join our telegram group. On this group, you can post all your doubts and queries. And we'll try to resort them as soon as possible, right? So are you ready for question number one? So here is our question number one. I hope the screen is perfectly visible. Okay, this question says, Dash is the name given to overindulgence in retail shopping by consumers who have missed shopping at their favorite outlets due to the lockdown. Very simple question. So if you are reading newspapers regularly, you must be aware of this term which has been in news lately. So it's, it's not something that you will, you are going to find in books, but something that, that has, uh, that has come into common man's, uh, common man's language or uh, you can easily find it in newspapers, right? So let us now move to the solution for it. And the solution says that the correct option is option C. So option C means revenge buying so revenge buying is the term given to the uh, to the demand of goods and services services which has boosted suddenly after the lockdown has gradually opened up right so i think this this is a very common phenomena we all have missed our favorite shopping outlets or your favorite cafes where you have missed eating with your friends or hanging out with your friends right so see just try to imagine the scenario that you have been waiting for a place to open for such a long time for a few months and now that place opens up and you know you you love that you love the food at that place or you love the ambience there so uh, therefore you are going to go there and spend time with your friends right similar is the concept of revenge buying that customers who were eagerly waiting for their favorite outlets and uh, restaurants to open up now have started uh, they 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 started to crowd those places right so over indulgence into retail shopping now customers started buying some things that they need that, that they uh, that they necessarily not needed right so buying of stuff that you do not need necessarily just out of uh, out of the uh, out of that happiness or out of that excitement or of overwhelming feeling right so this is revenge buying now a, a, a question that pops up here is that why is it called revenge buying who are we taking revenge against right so this revenge term it comes against COVID-19 basically taking revenge from COVID-19 itself because COVID didn't allow you to go out or hang out with your friends that is why you're seeking revenge against it by spending too much into uh, this stuff or shopping too much or uh, going to cafes or ordering food too much right so taking revenge against the virus which locked the stuff down that you actually liked right so this is the concept of revenge buying now why are we discussing about revenge buying see the, uh, the policy makers obviously we know that festive season is about to come up you can already see many sales many offers on e-commerce websites amazon amazon and flipkart going gaga over the stuff that okay uh, diwali season is approaching so we need to give discounts to customers right so this revenge buying or this pent up demand this uh, demand which has been suppressed for some time that it can lead to a boom and uh, even policy makers are counting on it you can read about auto firms uh, who are planning to expand their production or who are planning to at least stock up so that whenever customer demands it they have the products in stock right so this revenge buying can be one uh, can be one factor which can lead to uh, which can which can pump up the ailing economy right 
So you can see here, I think we have discussed most of the uh, points mentioned here, uh, detected by, so this is a phenomenon detected by market watchers. So it doesn't come out of any theory, captures a need to stop coronavirus or to defeat coronavirus by defying its clamps on life as usual online orders so e-commerce has played a huge role in this because you know if that if you cannot go to uh, your favorite restaurant to have food you can just order it online and ordering online has been considered relatively safer right so online orders e-commerce playing a huge role government has shifted tax incentive meant for vacations to purchase of big ticket items so we learned about in one session about the festive season advance scheme that was provided by that was provided by government money is covered in great detail after that and this term the revenge buying term it came into limelight after the french fashion brand hermes recorded the sales worth 2.7 million dollars in china when it opened up after lockdown in april right so it was witnessed there. So after that, many big brands like Gucci, Prada, Louis Vuitton, all of these, they faced, they witnessed this phenomena, right? So here though we are talking about China, right? So guys, see, this revenge buying, this is not applicable to all the classes of the society because obviously if, if, you, uh, if you want to indulge into revenge buying, you need to have money in your pocket, right? So this this belong this phenomenon this belongs to a certain class of society that can afford to shop, but was put on a halt because of the lockdown, right? So we are not talking about uh, all the people out there, but a certain section that can afford to shop, right? So uh, okay, this was about China, but if we consider Indian situation, okay, policymakers are counting on this concept on this uh, on this phenomena of revenge buying but actually indians are, are are they willing to buy when they see so much uncertainty around them right so uh, first of all uh, first of all i think uh, think of your own self your family that whether you would like to purchase in this season or not right so indians are considered as savers right so india as compared to markets like us and china indians are not considered uh, shoppers willing to spend too much on luxurious products so we have to see whether this revenge buying it it makes a dent in indian economy or not right so indian in india luxury is still relatively a nascent industry going back to mid 2000s so market is much smaller than mature markets like us and china right Moving ahead to second question, here is your second question for, to, uh, for today which says following are some statements given to you about factoring which are the correct ones. Three statements given to you, you have to sorry, you have to select the incorrect ones here, right. So the incorrect statements moving ahead to solution and the solution is option E. Option E means 1 and 3 that means 1 is not right and 3 is not right. The only correct statement is statement Two, right okay first of all let us try to understand this concept of factoring okay factoring means factoring means it is it is a kind of facility or a short term credit facility which is available to businesses let's say if there is a business this which has a bills of receivable that means it has made some sale it has go, it ha, the revenue is due, due but it has not got the cash yet or the cash uh, might be coming in two or three months now business needs cash in, uh, urgently now what to do so if there is any entity that can provide some cash to this business it is going to be of much use so this facility is known as factoring that an entity providing service of accepting bills receivable of a business and then in return giving that business some cash probably not a full amount of BR but somewhat lesser than that right so that that business can carry out its day-to-day -day operations this is known as factoring I hope now you are clear with it so allows a business to obtain immediate capital or money based on the future income attributed to a particular amount due on an 
receivable or a business invoice right so let's say there is a business and that business is having a bills receivable worth rupees 1 lakh right so now this business goes to an entity called factor now this factor is willing to give 90,000 to this business urgently and then whenever this bills receivable bills receivable what does it mean bills receivable matlab uh, it means that it, it is a document that signifies that this business a that we were initially talking about it has to get payment from some other party so bills receivable is uh, is, a, is is an evidence of that right so this factor gives 90000 to business a and business a uses this urgent money to fulfill its needs and the factor can take some commission in return right now when the payment falls due on this bills receivable factor is going to so uh, the payment is going to go to the factor right so they recover their money right so factor is an intermediary or agent that provides cash or financing companies by purchasing their account receivables right there are three parties here involved obviously the party a or the business a which wanted to get urgent cash party b which had given a br to a or from whom a had to take a payment and then there comes a factor in between which provides urgent money to a so there are three parties involved in the transaction company selling its account receivable a in our case factor that purchases the receivable and the company's customer or b who must now pay the receivable amount to the factor instead of paying the company it was it was owing originally money to, right so uh, it is not a full amount usually 80 or 90 percent as i just told you in the example and factor pay the balance sum 20 percent of the amount which includes finance cost and operating cost to the client when customer fulfills the obligation now okay there is a difference of 10,000 factor has given 90,000 to business a now when uh, business b pays to factor in totality of 1 lakh it can give the rest amount 10,000 back to a uh, uh, by uh, after deducting his commission and other expenses which have been made right so this is the concept of factoring or financing using bills uh, by selling bills receivable right so this is the concept here you can see that how factoring can be useful to a business there is one person Claire owns ABC repairs an order comes in Claire buys the necessary supplies and gets the job done after that work is inspected ABC sends an invoice to the customer payment has to be made in 60 days but Claire is not happy because she needs to find another client she then finds a potential new customer but they might have to turn them down because she does not have the money to get the other job done but if there is some factor she factors an invoice she has from another job and gets the advance of 85 percent right of the total within a day and Claire agrees to get the job done the job is done an influx of cash from factoring allowed Claire to expand the business in this way okay Okay, this might not be clear to you the written text I uh, so but I hope you get the story you get the whole point here right so there is nothing much important written here uh, except from the story right okay coming back to the statements first factoring is a relationship between factor client in which factor purchases clients account receivables and pay up the entire sum receivable immediately that is why this is not correct because the entire payment is not done and statement 3 is not correct because it is not a long term financing option but a short term financing option option 2 is correct because see the factor here is more concerned about the credit worthiness of the party who has to pay the payment later in the example we took that was business B which has to made which has to initially make payment to A now will be making to factor right 
So that is why the factor will be concerned about the credit worthiness of B rather than A because B has to pay to the factor. So I hope the question is clear to you. There was a question. Uh, someone was asking that how is factoring diff different from LRDs that is lease rent discounting that we just discussed in one session. So I hope now you are clear with this. Factoring, you, uh, factoring uh, consists of financing using account receivables whereas in LRDs the financing is done using the rent receipts that have to, that have to come in future or uh, the, the borrower owns a property on the basis of which he uh, a property from which some income has to come right so there is a the difference there is account receivable in factoring and in LRDs there is involvement of some property right so here is question number third which says Look at the following statements about market returns and select the correct one. Moving ahead to the solution and the solution says that the correct option is option B. Option B means an equity risk premium is an excess return earned by an investor when they invest in the stock market over a risk free rate. So very simple question guys. First of all obviously we know that equity is a is considered to be a risky investment right so if you're buying shares of a company and on the other hand if you are buy, buying bonds uh, let's say issued by government obviously the stock is going to be riskier as compared to the securities issued by government so equity is considered to be riskier right okay now in finance there is obvious there is always a risk and return trade-off that means the higher the risk the investor is willing to undertake the higher is the return right so if you are willing to take a higher risk then there there is possibility of getting a higher return so since uh, so uh, so considering this if an investor thinks to buy equity or thinks to invest into equity then the return should be higher as compared to a safer asset right so the excess of reward that an investor can earn on investing into equity as compared to a risk free investment is known as equity risk premium that means the extra amount or the extra reward that you can earn by investing into equity that is known as equity risk premium uh, earned by an investor when they invest in stock market over a risk free rate right so in simple terms let's say if you invest into bonds and you get a return of 3% Whereas in equity, you can get a return of 7%. So there is a different of, difference of 4% and this 4% is going to be the equity risk premium. The excess of equities reward over risk-free investments uh, reward. Right? Very simple question. Let us learn some more things about equity risk premium. Here you can see the formula. How to calculate it? market expected rate of return minus risk free rate of return so what is the expectations of market if you subtract risk free rate return from it then you get equity risk premium formula right excess in uh, excess return investors get for taking on relatively higher risk of equity investing size of the premium varies depends on the level of risk in a particular portfolio right so this premium can vary it is not fixed it can change depends that uh, in which investment are you putting your money also changes over the time at market as market risk fluctuates right based on the idea of risk reward trade off that we just discussed it observes the stock market and government bond performance over a defined period of time and uses that historical performance to the potential for future returns basically it involves using the historical data or using or finding out government bond performance because it is considered as the risk free investment so first finding out about the government bond performance then analyzing the market observing the stock market then 
uh, estimating that what is going to be the equity risk premium or the excess of investing into equity then bonds right so a simple question moving ahead to the next question for today okay so this question says dash is the tendency So dash is the tendency to view the performance of existing stocks or funds in market as a representative comprehensive sample without regarding those that have closed right so seems like some uh, seems like uh, some complex concept moving ahead to the solution and the solution says that the correct option is option a option a means survivorship bias this is a very interesting concept that i find really interesting see okay talking up in a general sense let's say you want to open a cafe right now if you want to open a cafe you go and talk to someone in your family who is a successful entrepreneur who has who is owning a chain of restaurants so that person motivates you enough to invest into this cafe or into your passion of owning a business right so now since you have taken guidance from a person who has been successful obviously that person is going to give you a positive view and your mind would be turned into a positive or an optimistic op or an optimistic thought process right but if you ask someone who has not been successful in running a restaurant or in or in running a cafe then that person might give you might tell you about some downsides or some drawbacks of uh, getting into doing your own business and your might mind, mind might change but the concept that we are talking about here is survivorship bias that means we tend to focus on the survivors or the winners so it basically survivorship bias means that we tend to focus more on the optimistic side or on the successful side right so uh, okay this is a basic example which is given to kids that it's okay if you do not study or if you do not get good marks because there are many people who have made their mark in world or who, who have been really success, successful uh, without getting good marks right but the point is if we do a study or if we analyze all the students that do not who do not get good marks and divide them into two and divide them into categories then probably there are going to be lesser proportion of students who did not get good marks but still became successful so we tend to focus on that let's say 1% only but rest of 99% who did not get good marks they probably struggle their life struggle throughout their lifetime right so we do not focus on this in order to motivate the child whenever he or she does not get some good marks right so this is known as survivorship bias focusing too much on the winners and having too much of an optimistic outlook right this can sometimes uh, misguide the investor so when we talk about uh, this survivorship bias in finance then we talk about that how Uh, we tend to focus on stocks or funds or schemes which have been really successful but we do not see a plethora of investments who uh, which have closed or which were not successful right so this is the concept of survivorship bias okay moving ahead here you can see it is a type of sampling sa sample selection bias that occurs when a data set only considers survivors or winners or existing observation fails to consider observations that already cease to exist right so let's say if we talk about returns from five mutual fund schemes and the returns are let's say 12% 10% 8% minus -3% and -15% so these are returns from five mutual fund schemes now these schemes giving the negative returns they have closed right and now if you find out the average of these three which are still existing then you tend to get a high average 
right so it makes an average of a total of 30 percent which means an average of 10 percent but what if what about these two you're not taking these into the calculation right if you have uh, so these have failed but they're uh, they they're uh, they're not getting success or their struggle is not getting into the calculation. So what if you found out the average of the five rather than these positive three ones, right? Then this average is bound to go down, right? Okay. So this is survivorship bias. Then we that the negative ones or the failures, they tend to get removed out of the market. And what we focus is on the positive ones or the successful ones. Refers to studies on mutual fund returns. Only use database that contain data about mutual funds that currently exist. But do not tell us about funds that are no longer existing. Tends to create conclusions that are overly optimistic. So what is the drawback of this survivorship bias? Obviously, it is good as a motivating factor. But there are negative sides to everything. So the negative side or the downside is that it makes the investors overly optimistic. Does not give them a clear or too true picture. That may not represent of real life environments. Survivorship bias is the risk. The chance of an investor making misguided investment. So there is the possibility of survivorship bias risk. Right. I hope now you are clear with this concept of survivorship bias. Moving ahead. This is your last question for today which says which of the following is or are not characteristics of information that has to be traded to make it insider trading. So. Uh, in, in concept of insider trading, you have to tell that the information which is being traded, what is or are not characteristic of that particular information to make it a case of insider trading. So uh, carefully choose, you have to select the points which are not the characteristics of information. Moving ahead, option A is the correct. Option A means public. This is the incorrect one. That means to make it a case of insider trading, information that is being traded should be non-public in nature and it should be material in nature, right? So I hope we all are aware of this concept called insider trading. If you are not, then don't worry because we are going to discuss it. So, see guys, insider trading means using some information that you should not, that is unethical to use to get your own benefit, to get some benefit, right? So, that is insider trading. Let's say there is, uh, let's say uh, there is a company and there is another, there is an investor who is somehow related to this company a limited now this investor knows that a limited is uh, that there is some problem going on in a limited and the share price of a limited is going to crash right so and this investor should not know this information that this investor has acquired the information from some unethical means that he should he or she should not be indulging into right now using this information this investor sells all the shares because they know that the that the market price is going to crash right now obviously this investor sells the share when the prices were still at the top and makes a profit rather than going for loss but after he sells the uh, sells the shares the market price crashes right so he used some information that he should not have possessed so that is the case of insider trading that the information is material. Material means that can change uh, an investor's decision. Had this information been into public, it might have influenced the decision of millions of investors who were not aware of it. Right. And the information should be non-public because if it is public, then it is known to everyone and it, then, then there is no significance or there is no advantage of possessing that information, right? So it should be material, uh, significant enough to influence an investor's decision and it should be non-public, right? So public is not a characteristic. I hope you get this 
uh, you get this concept of insider trading so buying or selling of a publicly traded company stock by someone who has non public material information about the stock material non public information that could substantially impact an investor's decision as i just told you to buy or sell the security right by non public information it is meant that the information is not legally out in public domain and only a handful of people directly related to the information they possess it if someone is caught in the act of insider trading he or she can be either sent to prison or charged a fine or both because it is an illegal act right so so uh, usually insider trading is conducted by the company's top management obviously because they possess certain information about the company which other shareholders or retail shareholders do not have but as long as they make a public disclosure of their transactions and they do not keep it hidden till then uh, till then it is not uh, considered harmful to the society basically this insider trading is a transaction that can be considered harmful for the financial system or for the other retail shareholders who are not aware of that particular set of information right so this was this is insider trading so guys here i have a question for you in yesterday's session we talked about family settlement deed if you remember now there is some probe going on by sebi into a company that 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 is involved so these two concepts have been picked up from this case only uh, insider trading and family settlement deed you have to tell me in comments that which company am i talking about and you guys were absolutely right uh, in yesterday's session we discussed about sponsors of mutual fund i was talking about the blackstone and lnt mutual fund deal uh, asset management company deal right so you guys were absolutely right now let's see if you can guess this one that which is the company i'm talking about involved these both of the two concepts insider trading and family settlement deed it is involved in this and sebi is probing this particular uh, entity right so guys uh, these were the five questions for today i hope you learned something new from this video before ending the session i would like to take one or two doubts okay so shirish bhat he has asked the meaning of non discretionary automatic stabilizers and discretionary fiscal impulse mentioned in uh, mints one of mints article called paradox of india stimulus response see uh, shirish here two types of stimulus is being talked about one is the automatic one so we usually consider economy as a self fulfilling mechanism and how is that let's say if there is recession in the economy due to some reason that recession is going to get people fired and if people are going to get fired and there is a slow down in the economy and the demand is slow then it is obviously going to correct itself right and how is that so because people are getting fired from business from their jobs right and if people are getting fired from their jobs then in that case they are not going to make so much of demand because they do not have the money and they do not have the money considering this businesses are going to lower their scale of production matching the demand matching their production level to the demand in the society uh, in the economy right so this is a self correcting mechanism that businesses have lowered their demand see uh, how does when uh, how does a recession occurs when there is excess of supply over demand right so in economics we define it so but when businesses reduce their production they reduce the supply and bring it equal to demand then the self correcting mechanism works and the economy gets balanced again same goes in case of inflation where businesses they increase their production match up to the demand and uh, they reach on the equilibrium again right so this is a self correcting mechanism after that sometimes when economy is too much into the recession or it is too much stuck it is not uh, it is not getting propelled by its own mechanism in that case uh, government has to step in and it has to take some measures on purpose 
to stimulate the demand in economy trying to build up income of people see there are two methods to correct this problem if supply is greater than demand either they will have to increase uh, the demand or they will have to decrease the supply right so uh, if the self correcting mechanism is not working government might uh, government might bring out some tools to increase the demand so that it comes equal to supply and the economy is once again balanced right so these are the two routes one is the automatic self correcting mechanism of economy after that the next is the next type so this one is the non discretionary automatic stabilizer the automatic self correcting mechanism of the economy and the other one is discretionary so first is non discretionary that is not being done on purpose and the next one is discretionary because it is being done on purpose isko jaan pooch ke kiya ja raha hai government jaan ke kar rahi hai taki wo demand ko increase kar sake by providing fiscal stimulus by providing benefits like this ltc cash voucher scheme or festive uh, advance scheme right so these are the two points being talked about here right so i hope now you are clear with this question and there were one or two more questions okay there was a question by aman and aman wanted to ask that we say when depreciation occurs exporters of a country get benefit and how is it that so this is because see when depreciation of a country's currency occurs in that case so let's say if in india indian rupee depreciates so what is going to happen if someone sitting in us is going to order some products from india which are being priced in indian rupee then that person will have to pay lesser dollars to acquire that indian product obviously they are getting indian products more cheaper so depreciation makes a country's product cheaper as compared to other countries products which make them more competitive and more attractive to the customer and this makes the customer demand more and obviously if the demand is more then exporter is going to benefit and the opposite mechanism takes and, and the similar kind of mechanism takes place in case of imports right so if you understand it properly i think you can uh, you you can draft it for imports as well but still if you face any problem aman kumar aman kumar okay this doubt was by aman kumar so if you still face any problem you can mention it in, on the videos as comments so guys these were the two doubts that i took today and this is all for today and i'll see you in the next session till then you take care of yourselves keep your studies going on and thank you for being here